hey, welcome back. I'm Jose Saldana, and I appreciate you being here for a second. I want to talk a little bit today about expectation. I'm going to read Acts chapter 3, just a portion of it, and then say what's been on my mind. Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter Fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And Peter saw it. He answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? There's a routine thing that goes on in this account. Some men pick up their friend who is lame from his birth. He can't walk. He can't move his self. He can't help himself out of his situation. So his friends, as a matter of routine, pick him up and they carry him and they lay him daily at the gate of this temple. That's their routine. He, once he gets to the temple, lays there, sits there, asking an alms or an offering of people that are entering into the temple, and that is his routine. Then Peter and John, as is their routine, are entering into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour in the morning. They're on their way to pray. That's their routine. That's their lifestyle. That's their habit. That's what they do. Everybody is going through their routine thing, just doing their everyday normal thing that they are accustomed to doing. And at this point, when all these routines are coming together and meeting at this one point, Peter and John are entering into the temple and they see this layman. And as they pass by him, they say, look on us. They look at his situation, what he's going through. I'm sure they're tired of seeing him there. And they say, look on us. So he looks up to them, expecting to receive something of them. He had an expectation. His expectation was to receive some kind of alms or offering, enough to buy food, a cheeseburger. He was expecting, hey, buddy, here's, here's a nice refreshment for you. And maybe here's a jacket if it was cold outside or some water if it's warm outside he's expecting to get something out of it and his expectations weren't that high I mean his routine was the same every day so his expectations weren't that high he was expecting to get some kind of routine thing Peter and John say look at us he says silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. We have a responsibility when we're going through our routine things. It's our routine thing to go to church. I'm recording this on a Saturday night. My routine thing is to get up Sunday morning early, prepare myself, 
go into the house of the Lord. But when we go into the house of the Lord, there's going to be people there, visitors there, guests there, even longtime church members. They're going to have expectations about what is going to take place in that church service. When we gather together, they have an expectation about songs we're going to sing, the process of service, the ins and outs of everything that's going to happen. They have expectations. Hopefully, their expectations are higher than I'm just going to go here and take a nap. Hopefully their expectations are higher than I'm going to go into this place and be bored to death. Hopefully their expectations are much higher than just going in and and not feeling anything and feeling like they did their duty by going to church, clocking out, going home. This, This man that was laid daily at the gate, his expectations weren't that high. He expected something. But his expectations weren't that high. Peter and and John, when they reach down to grab him by the right hand, their expectations are that God is going to do something. Such as I have, give I unto thee. We have to have something to give. If people are going to be there, we have to have something to give them. We have to have something to offer them. We have to, if we're going to exercise that faith, I've got to have that faith inside me to exercise. I've got to have that faith inside me to offer it. The relationship that I have and the benefits that, that come with my relationship with my father, I have to have that in order to give it. So Peter and John had an expectation of what happens when they reach out, when they reach down, when they touch somebody. When they step out in faith, when they speak out in faith, there's an expectation there. We have to have an expectation that God is going to do something miraculous every time we come to the house of the Lord. Every time we enter into the sanctuary, we need to have an expectation that God is going to show up and God is going to do something great. That God is going to heal somebody. God is going to do the miraculous. He's going to change somebody's life. God is going, to be, is going to move. Somebody's going to get baptized in his name. Somebody's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We have to have an expectation coming into the house of the Lord. Where there's expectation, there's excitement. And that excitement is contagious. That faith is contagious. And we have to have something to bring. They reach down, pull him up by the right hand, and immediately his feet and ankle bones receive their strength. And then he starts to leap up and praise God with them, enter into the sanctuary with them. It becomes that shows the contagious effects of faith. It's a contagion, it spreads. Then everybody starts to wonder who is this and what has happened to him? And wasn't he lame? Where did this miracle happen? And then God begins to be glorified. Peter stands up and begins to preach the name of Jesus Christ, the healing power that's in his name. There's nothing like the name of Jesus Christ. When you glorify the name of Jesus Christ, all of these things become possible. There's an expectation there. I expect to go and glorify the house. I mean, glorify the name of the Lord. I expect to lift up his name. We're not lifting up any other name. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. And when we do, the miraculous can happen. God moves and intervenes and steps into that service. I want to go into service with high expectations. If it's going to happen anywhere, if the miraculous is going to happen anywhere, it needs to happen with us in the sanctuary, with people that know his name, love his name, people of the name that have a revelation of the power of the name of Jesus, the mighty God in Christ. If it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen there with us. If it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to be happening with those of the household of faith. When people come into the sanctuary, they might not have high enough expectations, but don't let that be said of you or of me or of you. Okay. We have to have the high expectations. I don't expect anything less than a move of God.